Yes, a piston engine design and production. And after that, they went to turboprops and turbojets. And they could get a whole lot more than 3,500 horsepower out of those engines. <laughs> so it's a monstrous engine. It's a four row. They have one in the museum. Visited it years ago. What's, what, what, what's going on with the end? Uh, they could just as well have used thin aluminum, but they decided, uh, heck, we'll use fabric because the problem is it doesn't last terribly long and it doesn't do well out in the weather. So this fabric has deteriorated to nothing. Ah, more visitors. Great. There's a plant, but they converted some of them into forest firefighters, and we still have some that do that job here. The other aircraft is uh, amphibian, so it can land either on lakes or the Supreme War, and a few of them were even used in the Vietnam War. These are, it's a list of all of the... And the engine was a big radial piston engine inside the nose here. Very similar to the engine that powered the Sherman tank in World War II. Big radial engine. The cylinder is arranged in a circle. And I'll work on the uh, M M90. Took over as the innovators and designers of most early aircraft. So they got to name a lot of the parts of aircraft with French names like fuselage, uh, aileron, empennage, and so on. So this is a pitot tube, it's a ram air. You fly through the air, greater the pressure inside the tube. So all airplanes have them, and many of them have more than one. Some of them have two, three, or even more pitot tubes. Like on this plane, it's a barber pole tube right on the nose. And on most of our aircraft, we have them covered up because if you... Usually we have a tennis ball on this. And uh, later on, they started mounting Sidewinder missiles on them as well on the side of the fuselage. The Sidewinder missile was one of our first air to air missiles, a heat seeking missile. Take it off their hands and we did. So that's what it looked like when you got it. 
one as well. And it's designed for ground attack. It could Eject from it, and in fact, he broke both arms during the ejection when he had to yeah. eject. So John McCann, he <laughs> used airplane. Yes, and this, he he this, chopped in Hanoi, in northern in Vietnam, huh? Yes, he did. Yeah. And then the Vietnamese civilians on the ground, when he parachuted down to the ground, he landed in some sort of a pond, and they. Using Russian design, Russian built. take these guns out. So this is 20 millimeter. That means it's uh, uh, the uh, the rotary cylinder on a handgun, a revolver handgun, but much bigger. <laughs> and then the uh, ammunition would be in uh, belt stem. Were used uh, in Vietnam by the U.S. Air Force and also by the S South Vietnamese Air Force. And then when uh, South Vietnam fell, the, these aircraft that were there then were inherited by the North Vietnamese, you know, when they unified the country under communist rule. They're pretty old airplanes now. But it was a, a lightweight jet fighter designed to be inexpensive and relatively easy to maintain. called the F-5 Freedom Fighter. She's a pilot. The guy on the right, a friend of mine, was the right seat. They all have the ability, the Navy planes mostly all have the ability to fold their wings. So this is our most recent airplane in our collection. We've had it only about a year, year and a half. The other fighter aircraft is very specialized. It's designed just for one job to shoot down Russian Taking these here. <laughs> taking all, all this Did you? Yeah. 